Hello, in this video we are going to learn about spermiogenesis, the last phase of spermatogenesis. In our previous video, we have mentioned that uh, spermatogenesis contains three phases, one, two and three. And the first phase was a spermatogonial phase and the next was a spermatocyte phase and the third one was spermatid phase. And I mentioned that spermatogonial phase is basically a mitotic division. A spermatocyte phase is basically a meiotic division. But the spermatid phase, uh, me meiosis division, and spermatid phase is no division. There is no cell division anymore. Spermatid is a differentiation. Okay, it, it is changing its form. The morphology is being changed uh, to be able to fertilize an oocyte. So please see the previous video before you visit this video. All right. So spermiogenesis begins from, as obviously it begins from the spermatid. So this is a spermatid and you can see that it has a central uh, round nucleus. This is not the structure of a spermatozoan. So we are going to learn how this is going to change into that spermatozoan. This, uh, it has all other organelles. We can see the other organelles one by one. Uh, first, we will go to this organelle. This is called a Golgi complex. Any cell will have a Golgi complex. Golgi is basically the packaging center of the cell. The cell will synthesize enzymes and enzymes will be packeted to specific destinations in the Golgi complex. The Golgi in the spermatid will form pro-acrosomal granules. I'll add a word here, prefix here. It's called pro-acrosomal granules. Pro-acrosomal granules are formed from the side uh, bulges of the Golgi uh, cisternae. And these pro-acrosomal granules will slowly, like small bubbles, they will coalesce and form an acrosomal granule. We'll come to that later. So this phase is called the Golgi phase. So that is the first phase of spermiogenesis. Spermiogenesis contains four phases. The first phase is Golgi phase and the Golgi will form pro-acrosomal granules, which is slowly going to, going to coalesce. Okay. We also, you can see uh, surrounding mitochondria. We'll uh, see how mitochondria are going to be changed. Uh, their locations, their arrangement are going to be changed further down. And you also see centrioles. Centrioles, as you know, are the microtubule organizing centers, also called MTOCs. From the centriole, you will have microtubules arranged. Basically, if you have a flagellum, so they, they will they will organize uh, uh, microtubules. Microtubules are the central skeleton of a flagellum. And you know that the spermatozoan contains a tail which is acting almost like a flagellum. Okay, some some others say that it is not a true flagellum, but uh, in, in the human uh, cellular system, if the human cell contains a flagella, it is inside this, inside the spermatozoan. So, a uh, microtubule organization center is also very important in forming the axonymal complex for the flagellum. So, we'll come to how each of these are going to metamorphose in the spermiogenesis process. So, in the first one, you call it as Golgi phase. What is the next phase? In the next phase, the acrosome, the Golgi is completely uh, converted into an acrosomal vesicle. So small, small pro-acrosomal granules will be formed and they will all coalesce to form an acrosomal vesicle. And the acrosomal vesicle is going to be uh, arranged in one side of the nucleus. If this is the nucleus, on one side of the nucleus, the acrosome will come and adhere on, on that end. Okay, that is going to define the anterior or the frontal part of that spermatozoan. Till then, you can imagine that this point, if I imagine that this is the center of the cell, it is almost radially symmetric. Everywhere you go, it is almost radially symmetric. The Golgi can actually wander around. Okay, but here the acrosomal, it has defined the anterior pole of that cell. So as it becomes acrosomal vesicle, it has defined the polarity for the cell. Okay, so yeah, opposite the acrosomal uh, assembly, opposite to that, the uh, centrioles will assemble. The centrioles will assemble and one of the centrioles will be, one, both of the centrioles will be perpendicular to each other and one of the centrioles will be again perpendicular to the plasma membrane. Okay, this is the plasma membrane of the cell. So if this is the plasma membrane, one centriole will be arranged, the mature centriole will be arranged perpendicular to the plasma membrane and that will form the axonymal complex that is what you are seeing here the axonymal complex will be formed from that centriole okay this cent centriole will be arranged like here and that will form the axonymal complex which will go on growing okay 
growing means that it, it is a it is a polymerizing process so lot of tubulin molecules will be arranged together and the polymerization will create a long uh, tail of axonium that will project forwards okay and this phase is called the cap phase okay cap phase why this is called cap phase i didn't mention that the acrosome is slowly slowly forming a cap around the nucleus okay it is not just touching the nucleus it is spreading out if you imagine this to be a nucleus uh, you take a small acrosome you bring it on the surface of that nucleus and you just flatten it out and paste it over the nucleus okay that that is what is going to happen here okay you can see that arrangement over here uh, it is it is basically getting flattened the acrosomal vesicle is flattening and getting enveloped over the anterior part of the nucleus another change that i need you to uh, understand is i i'll just uh, um, erase all this to avoid clutter this is called the golgi phase this is called the cap phase another important event that you need to understand is this nucleus the nucleus is fairly large here but slowly the nucleus will begin to get compacted more and more compaction will occur for the nucleus why more and more complex how is it possible uh, the nucleus contains you know it contains the nucle dna arranged uh, like a double helix okay i can't draw a double helix completely since it's a spatial structure the dna is wound over histone proteins you know that histones are arranged small subunits of histones are arranged and around that the dna will be wound they are called nucleosomes what happens here in the spermiogenesis process is that the histones are replaced okay histones are replaced by another uh, protein called protamine protamine p r o t a m i n e so protamines will replace histones and the presence of protamines will make the dna uh, eligible for more compaction and that more amount of compaction is the uh, that that will cause the nucleus to get compacted more next we are going to the third phase the third phase is called acrosome phase let me just erase all this okay so we already know that the pro acrosomes coalesce to form an acrosome but it is still in the nucleus it is almost in the center of the cell but what is going to happen is this entire complex that means the acrosomal vesicle and the nucleus is going to move nearer the plasma membrane you can see it's getting getting more and more proximal to the plasma membrane that means the acrosomal membrane is going to be more and more proximal uh, more and more near to the plasma membrane uh, of the spermatozoan okay so what happens is this cytoplasm is slowly going to flow towards this side right okay it's slowly going to flow towards this side the entire complex is moving towards one side that is why this is called acrosomal phase because acro means it is going towards a tip so the entire complex is going towards the tip of a cell okay in the uh, opposite pole okay in the posterior why i'll call this anterior pole and i call this posterior pole in the posterior pole you are seeing more enormous assembly of the tail of the axonemal complex and you are also seeing the mitochondria are now getting arranged uh, around this axonemal complex over here okay and the cytoplasm is slowly slowly flowing why it is flowing because the nucleus and the acrosome is going towards one side and you can see the cytoplasm is almost clumping into a, a blob like body okay this will eventually form what is called the residual body most of the cytoplasm is considered as waste stage for the spermatozoan and that will be removed so we are going to that phase next all right so we are going to the last and final phase and that is called the maturation phase in the maturation phase this forms a residual body that is the one i mentioned before this forms a residual body the acrosome is now very close Uh, this is only a diagrammatic representation actually this is very close there is only a film of cytoplasm between it uh, you actually have the plasma membrane then the acrosomal membrane the outer and the inner acrosomal membrane and the nuclear membrane close by okay it's just as a film of cytoplasm here this arrangement is very important for the spermatozoan to be able to undergo the process of fertilization okay fertilization it needs to go through a lot of barriers and finally enter into the uh, oocyte plasma membrane into the oocyte cytoplasm to fertilize so to do that these are all structural uh, you know uh, weapons that are going to enable the spermatozoan to go and fertilize the oocyte okay so we are going to uh, look at what all are the other structures that you see here 
uh, yeah, uh, this is the this uh, now will be called the middle piece. Middle piece will be the region where all the mitochondria are arranged. Mitochondria are now actually arranged like a, a spiral, like a helix. Okay, you know that DNA is arranged like a helix, almost like that. The mitochondria will be arranged like a helix. So this part we call it now the head. This is called the middle piece. Okay, between that you may have the, this can be called as the connecting piece or the neck. Okay, after the middle piece, you have the tail. The tail can be divided into a principal piece, a very long principal piece, and a small end piece. The finer details of these are actually a little complex, ultra structural details, but I don't think that is not that much necessary. But you need to know that the, the two centrioles, that there is centriole over here and centriole over here, they will be arranged like a proximal centriole on this point and a distal centriole at this point. Okay, the proximal centriole is the one will, which will give off the axonimal complex. From the distal centriole, it will give an outer fib dense fibrous sheath. Okay, these two will form uh, the principal piece components, and in the end piece, you only have the axonimal complex without the fibrous sheath. Okay, those details may not be that much necessary. The main detail that you need to know is this side. Okay, we'll come to that in, in this beautiful diagram by Okabe uh, in the journal development. You can see the plasma membrane, you can see the acrosome. See how much the acrosome has covered the spearhead like nucleus. The nucleus is enveloped by the acrosome. This uh, capping of the acrosome begins from the second phase onwards, but it's completed over here. And around that, you have the plasma membrane and a very small film of cytoplasm. Okay, so this acrosome contains a lot of enzymes. You have hyaluronidase, you have an enzyme called acrosin, a very important enzyme called acrosin. And these are all going to help uh, to penetrate the barriers that will uh, enable it to go on to. Uh, fertilize the oocyte. Okay, now we're going to the structure of the spermatozoan. This is the structure of the spermatozoan. Uh, I, I'm sorry, my overlay is over it, but uh, you know that the, the, uh, the, the pointed end is like this, and uh, over the pointed end, you have the nucleus. The nucleus is extremely compacted. It is, it is compacted because of the protamine molecules that have replaced the, histam, uh, the histone proteins, and around that, you have the acrosomes. Okay, acrosome, uh, acrosomal complex has been enveloped. Two third of the nucleus is now enveloped by the acrosome. You have a very small film of cytoplasm. You have a proximal centriole here. You have a distal centriole here. The mitochondria are arranged around the middle piece. This length is around five microns. The middle piece is around again five to seven microns. You can remember it as five microns itself. And this is the principal piece. The principal piece is approximately 40 microns. And you have an end piece, end piece. Okay, this is principal piece. The end piece is again 5 microns. Okay, the difference between end and principal pieces, the principal piece contains the axonimal complex, the 9 plus 2 arrangement of microtubules around which you have a dense fibrous sheath. Okay, here you only have the axonimal complex. You don't have the dense fiber sheath. This is the only difference between uh, end piece and principal piece. Okay, now if we think about this functionally, the mitochondria is going to give the energy. It is going to form the energy and the uh, the flagellum. This is basically the flagellum. The flagellum is going to uh, create the movement of the spermatozoan in a very complex environment from the testis uh, the spermatogenesis occurring in the testis from but from the testis it has to uh, reach the female genital tract and from there it has to go through the harsh environments of the female genital tract to the point where uh, it will penetrate uh, barriers like corona radiata, the zona pellucida and finally the vitelline membrane to fertilize the egg. So it has to go a long way to fertilize the egg and this is the structural format that the spermatozoan has to enable it to undergo that journey and that process of fertilization. Okay, so for that it has uh, this much uh, specializations in the head region. The nucleus is compacted. The nucleus is the one that is going to actually be delivered to the oocyte cytoplasm. That's why you can think that spermatozoan basically a specialized package of nu of a nucleus. The nucleus is going to be deposited into the uh, into the oocyte, and this is the uh, the machinery that is going to help 
the travel that is this uh, flagellum okay that is this axonemal complex and the mitochondrial assembly is going to power it okay so you can think about all this structure you can correlate that with the function and think of this as a, a machinery as a gamete as a machinery that is going to deliver the male uh, dna into the female oocyte to enable fertilization so thank you